Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education. May I have a motion to go into closed session? As permitted by the section 3-305B of the general provision article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, I move that we go into closed session to discuss a personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to review the human resources personnel report, to discuss collective bargaining negotiations, to review several administrative items, HR report minutes from June 7th, 14th, and 30th, and to review upcoming meetings and events. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We will now go into closed session and we will be back at 6 p.m. Welcome to the Board of Queen Anne's County's Education Meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for Queen Anne's citizens to review on QAC TV, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table. During this week's meeting, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations outside of the meeting room. We will now stand and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance, led by our student board members. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> May I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Oh, I can't see. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those say no. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from June 7th, June 14th, and June 30th? I make a motion that we approve the minutes from June 7th, 14th, and 30th. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Um, at this time, the Queen Anne's County Board of Education would like to welcome Dr. Kane um, as their new superintendent. Um, we would also like to um, recognize our new board members, student board members, excuse me. And I think I, I know who that. Queen Anne's County High School will be Sarah. Hi, thank you. <laughs> and Grace. 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 I'm sorry, Grace, Grace, I don't see your name, but now I do. <laughs> and Kent Island High School will be uh, Grace. Um, Dr. Kane, at this time, would you like to address the audience? I am, I am happy to address the audience, but I, if you would uh, accept my apologies, I want to defer just a little bit because I'd like to give our student board members an opportunity to say a few words if they so desire. I know that we have some wonderful things going on in both of their lives, so if they'd like to say a few words, then we certainly like to hear from them, if that's okay, if that pleases that's the board. fine, yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Grace. Um, I'm really happy to be working with the Board of Education and I'm looking forward to the coming year. Good. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm excited to be working with you guys. I hope to help make a difference at my school and to keep the communication between you guys and the high school and I can't wait. Thanks. Welcome. Yeah, both of welcome. You. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to both of you. And I, likewise, am very excited to be here in Queen Anne's County. It has been a quite a journey to get to this point. I'm excited to be here. I want to thank all of you who have reached out to me so far. I've gotten several emails. I've had some visitors just pop in and see me, and I welcome all of that. I'd like to take a moment to just applaud the work of the leadership team and of our interim superintendent, former interim superintendent, Mr. Greg Paluski. So let's honor him for the work that he's done. It has really just been my great pleasure the last few days that I've been here um, meeting folks. I've got a lot more planned. I look forward to getting out into the community to meet with you and the groups that you represent to make plans for how we can make Queen Anne's County even better. There are lots of accolades, lots of wonderful things that are happening with students, adults in the community, but I think there are plenty of opportunities for growth. So I'm excited about it. Thank you for your trust. I'm I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you.
this time, Dr. Kane, would you like to um, lead us into our recognitions? Oh, let's go down. down. I got you. She's going to your. We just stand up and they're going to recognize some okay. of the students and staff for various things they've done. We just kind of go down by steps. Yeah. Yeah. So if you pardon me, I'm going to go ahead and read the script that's been given to me so that I don't get anybody off track. All right, so we're going to do things just slightly differently. Um, I'm going to take an opportunity to welcome and recognize Wayne and Chip from Bayview Investment Incorporation. So if you would please come forward. We are very, very fortunate to have um, such a tight-knit community and supportive business partners. Wayne Humphreys and Chip Brittingham with Bayview Investment Incorporated have been a sponsor for Queen Anne's County Public Schools for many, many years, to what I understand. They were involved in the beginning years of the annual awards gala and moral and appreciation um, and board meeting recognitions, both of which have brought positive moral and appreciation for the great work that our staff does for the students of Queen Anne's County. Bayview Investment has made it possible for us to show our appreciation and to give back deserving staff by helping us to host the, our gala and by sponsoring the infamous Energizer Bunny Award. <laughs> so I've been told about this Energizer Bunny Award. It's fabulous. The Energizer Bunny Award is given to a staff member or a volunteer who just keeps going. So appropriately named. This award is often compared to an Academy Award when won and brought back to a school for display. That is hilarious. We want to take this time to reflect on what a great partnership we have with Wayne and Chip. We're both beyond grateful to have supporters such as you and personally grateful as well. I can speak on behalf of the Board of Education, the executive team, and Queen Anne's County Public Schools staff when I say that your sponsorship does not go unnoticed. We're so fortunate to have you help bring positivity to our system for almost 20 years. And we certainly do look forward to continuing this great relationship. So congratulations to the both of you. part of our recognitions involves our retirees. Tonight we'd like to express our appreciation and thanks for the efforts of our talented staff and generous sponsors. So tonight we have the opportunity to recognize our right retirees for 2016-17. It's an honor to be able to recognize your dedication of years of service to this school system and to all of our students. This year's retirees range from building service foremen, school assistants, supervisors, teachers, guidance counselors, bus drivers, administrators, secretaries, school psychologists, custodians, and specialists. This is a time to celebrate you and to acknowledge the importance of the contributions that you've made to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. We want to recognize and show our appreciation for your loyalty and commitment to the students, families, and schools. From all aspects of a public school system, each 
one of these retirees has gone through many changes and just my personal probably some blood sweat and tears involved in that as well over just the last 12 to 15 years public education has made many advancements and adjustments these changes range from errors of traditional classrooms to open space classrooms to modified open space classrooms and then back to traditional era uh, warranting major building changes. In terms of instruction, classrooms have gone from quiet individual work to small group settings to student to student productive conversations. Curriculum has had its fair share of changes as we progress from the Maryland Voluntary Curriculum to Maryland Learning Outcomes to, learning, to Common Core and then to Maryland College and Career Ready Standards, as you well know. And along with curriculum comes assessment changes from CTBS to MSPAP to MSA, and currently we're in the era of PARC. We've gone from IBM labs to computer labs to laptop carts to Chrome and smart boards. We've overcome and survived all of these changes and obstacles. You've been supported and embraced with every change, and you've helped students to succeed every single year. We look forward to having you back in our school system to share with us your expertise and many years of knowledge, whether that be through community support, becoming a substitute, or mentoring our new teachers. Graduating to this new chapter in your life means you are now free from the school routine. <laughs> Somebody ought to be saying amen or something. <laughs> the same routine that you've been doing since you were in grade school, all of that's going to change now. With this class of retirees, we are losing 697.5 years of experience. 697.5 years of experience. That knowledge and experience is now leaving our system, but we have faith that you have influenced your peers, shared your knowledge, and built in support that will keep our system moving forward and keep your legacy alive. Each of you have influenced hundreds and thousands of students and staff members, whether that be in teaching in the classroom, transporting our students, supporting our staff, um, supporting our students in multiple ways, keeping school operations functioning safe and clean. <coughs> We're forever in your debt for this positive influence that you've made during your time here, and we hope that each of you, each of you, enters this new chapter in your life with open arms and takes the opportunity to self-indulge. <laughs> Let your dreams turn to reality. Keep that um, opportunity for self-reflection, certainly. And most importantly, relax. <laughs> Enjoy your family. Do some of the things that you've always wanted to do. Now you have some time to do it. A little bit of time before you come back and help us. <laughs> we hope you take this summer to reflect on your careers and recharge for this next chapter in your lives. So I'd like to call the names of the folks that I believe are here. I'm going to ask any that I have not checked off here if you walked in after I got started to stand at the end. So we have with us today Leanna Boyer. When I call your name, please do stand. Leanna Boyer. Sandra Chance, James Conyer, Connie Dean, Holton Joseph Gannon, I remember meeting you. Yes, I do. I remember you. <laughs> Beverly Dads. <laughs> Emma Isley. <laughs> Letha Kilson. <laughs> Deborah Lawrence. Pamela Lopez, Arlene Redding, Thank you. 
And have I missed anyone that may have come in after I got started? If so, would you please stand so that we might recognize you? So it's all family. So all of us, please give them one more rousing hand of applause. Congratulations to each of you. I told you wouldn't forget me. <laughs> I didn't, did I? <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations to you, you well. too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saw in the dollar store? <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, sir. Here you go. One, two, and three. At this time, we will have press and public comment from our audience. We ask that all speakers keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including your telephone number and address over on the table where uh, Mr. Pender is. Comments should be limited to two minutes in length. Comments longer than two minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item, an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future, or a matter of general policy over which the board presides or has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are discussed at the bargaining table. This is not a proper avenue to address specific students or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on legal appeals to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of the individual staff member are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or processed through the available channels to you. Citizens' participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member resp responds to your questions at a later date. The board respects your desire and your right to convey your message freely, but ask that, uh, as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when offering your critique. The first speaker signed up is Richard McNeil. Good evening, Richard McNeil. Uh, I am the current uh, president of the Retired Education Association, so all you folks uh, will be getting you a letter and uh, hopefully you'll be joining our organization. And uh, um, I was reelected after a 45 second uh, campaign at our last meeting. So 
uh, I'm, I'm there for the next couple of years. On behalf of the educators, uh, Retired Educators Association, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Kane to our, our group. Thank you. I uh, look forward to uh, the next uh, four years or eight years or 12 years, however long you uh, enjoy staying here. I worked in this county uh, and retired after 44 years and have been mentoring for the last four years, so I still enjoy getting into the schools. But um, hopefully, uh, once you get yourself acclimated and uh, settled in, we'll give a chance to sit down and, and uh, have a meeting with you if we could. Uh, also, at this time, I'd like to thank uh, your finance officer, Robin Landgraf, for a conversation that she started with the state, uh, which allows us as retirees to have our health care payments deducted from our uh, pension so we don't have to write a check every month. And I, I thank her for that, and uh, she did a great presentation to our group. Um, I think it's going to save the board money because they don't have to mail out things, and we don't have to send in money. So thank you for doing that. Win. We appreciate that. And, and again, um, I have a button for you that hopefully you can. Sir. Uh, it says, I love the Eastern Shore. So, um, well, of course. And I, I know that you are from Maryland and have been around in Maryland for a while, but from Virginia. But uh, hopefully in another couple of years, you can wear that very proudly and say, yeah, I really love the Eastern Shore. It's a nice place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you. And all you retirees. <laughs> Our next speaker is Marshall Ryans. Hello, Hi. my name is Marshall Rhines. Um, I work here at the board office. I'm a finance clerk. Rob is my supervisor. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to come just to say a few words to our uh, new superintendent. And I better read from my paper or I'll say too much. Um, Dr. Andrea Kane, I would like to welcome you to uh, your first official board meeting. I'm sure you know that there will be lots of challenges uh, facing you, but no challenge will be too difficult with the help of the parents, the staff, the community, and our stakeholders, together for the purpose of giving our students the safest and the best education that they deserve. As Helen Keller said, one of her quotes is, alone we can do so little Together, we can do so much. So I hope that sticks for this um, coming year. Thank you. Thank you. That con concludes our community members who have signed up to speak. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Step forward. State your name. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Daniels, and I'm here twofold this evening. And first, I would say good evening, Dr. Kane, and welcome. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Eric Daniels. And on behalf of the Queen Anne's County uh, Local Management Board Multicultural Proficiency Committee and the Northern Queen Anne's County Multicultural Proficiency Committee, we look forward to both partnering with you and supporting your efforts with the Queen Anne's County Public School System and our community as a whole. As a group, we have spent uh, the last few years attempting to support a community who has always expressed a desire to live, to work, to, and to play and learn together. We have embraced the opportunity to have those different conversations that are needed so that we might move forward on a common ground. And again, on behalf of the Multicultural Proficiency Committees, we welcome and invite you uh, to attend any of our monthly meetings. Uh, the Local Management Board um, Multicultural Proficiency Committee meeting is usually held the third Wednesday of each month at 1 p.m. usually here at the board office. Uh, the Northern Queen Anne's County Multicultural Proficiency Meeting is usually held in the Northern County in Sellersville Middle School and those days change a little bit because of the varied schedules of people involved. But also on behalf of the Queen Anne's County National Association for Advancement of Colored People, we welcome you here to Queen Anne's County and also to your first board meeting. Uh, we want you to know that we are here as a branch of the National Advancement of Association of Queen, of, excuse me, of colored people here in Queen Anne's County, and we look forward also to working with you, your administration, and the staff. Again, we welcome you to Queen Anne's County, 
and we are here to support you in whatever way that we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize, but I jumped ahead of myself. Um, if you are looking at the paper, uh, 501 is to introduce the student board members. Um, so we're gonna try it one more time because I have a little bit of information on each one of them at this point. Uh, we're gonna start with Sarah Sharber, who is Queen Anne's County High Schools. Um, Sarah will attend, be attending the leadership conference at Washington College July 23rd through the 29th and the MABE student board orientation on August 10th. And then Grace Park, welcome again <laughs> from Ken Island <laughs> High School. Grace will be attending a leadership conference in Romania. That's a long way to go for a conference. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and traveling to Europe, leaving tomorrow, um, 7-13 through August 4th. She will also be interning at University of Virginia, is that correct? In Charlottesville, Virginia. Kent Island High School events, August 1st, Fall Sports Orientation. Welcome, so, girls. we would like to welcome our student board members. Welcome. It's nice to have you. So, might I ask, Grace, what are you going to be doing exactly in Romania? <laughs> I will be an American counselor at a leadership camp for Romanian teenagers who want to apply to colleges in America in the coming years. Wow. Good job. Nice. Thank you. Can you want to say anything? Uh, leadership. Wait, do I, just, do I have to press the button? No. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to at the college, every year um, SGA has an mask event so that's when all the SGAs meet up in one spot in Ocean City where we elect new members we discuss issues so when I go to my workshop I'll be learning skills to be a counselor at that meeting and other meetings so I'm gonna learn skills to help teach other kids leadership skills communication skills and stuff like that Very good. Very good. Well, once again welcome ladies um, at this time we have on the agenda 10 minute break do we want to take it or I think we're good. Yeah, we can continue. All right, we're going to continue on then. Don't forget the 721 then. Um, let's see. And then we're going to go to presentation 6.01, the Ombudsman report from Mr. Brad Engel. Okay. Um, we want to do the signing up the negotiated agreements. I think, um, that's next. No, mine's, mine's different than yours. Yeah, I was so, going to say something because, uh, oops, and yeah. then I'm right in there, see, mm -hmm. we're going to do that and then we get to that. So this would be the negotiated agreement. Well, see, that's what, that's what I was told. That's what I was told. Yeah, the final. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready. Good yes. evening. Good evening, Dr. Kane and board members. And um, it's a privilege to be the first presenter tonight on this uh, wonderful night. And I thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm here to give an ombudsman report for the 2016 2017 school year. Um, and I will say that it certainly uh, was a challenging year uh, from the Office of Student Services in my role as a supervisor of student services and ombudsman. I know that there were a lot of uh, issues and challenges and felt like we uh, addressed and gave thorough consideration to, to those issues and uh, worked with Mr. Paluski and Ms. Pauls and felt like we were a good team. Um, taking on uh, every complaint that came our way and every grievance and trying to give every issue uh, thorough consideration. Uh, so this work is really the, f the reflection of the three of us as well as uh, our student services team uh, working together on these issues. Um, when I was first assigned the role of ombudsman back in 2011, uh, a few of my associates teased me and said, now you have the worst job in the county. <laughs> you get to listen to every complaint. Well, I have to say, um, honestly, that I feel this is my favorite part of the job. 
because I have an opportunity to work with parents who come to you with an issue and really it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing when your child is suffering and that's usually why they contact me. They're frustrated, um, they're confused, um, they're unsure of a direction, they feel like they're, they're not getting help um, at the school. Um, and so oftentimes I can help sort these out. I feel confident when an issue comes my way then I at least try to address it. Maybe not resolve it completely, but try to help out and make it better. So that's kind of my role and I really value it and treasure it. And um, spend a lot of time talking to parents. Some phone calls last over an hour. Some meetings last for two hours. And, I'm, and again, you know, it's, you really have to put the time in to sort of uh, address these issues. Um, so that is my role is to listen and uh, listen to concerns and provide information and work with parents to resolve these complaints. So I guess we'll go right into the data. Um, this is, these are the complaints by year. As you can see, um, this past year there were fewer complaints uh, than the year before, although I will say the, the nature of the complaints were, were quite serious this year. Um, but you can see sort of an up and down uh, across the board. My first year in 2011, we didn't have very many complaints, and I think once people realized that, um, you know, we had this process in place, that the, the number of complaints increased. Now these are complaints, these are not complaints that go to the school. These are complaints from people who feel like they have gone to the school and the issue wasn't addressed and they want to go to the next level. Um, so I don't record complaints to a specific school because that's just sort of the nature of doing business in school administration. Um, the locations of the concerns, um, you can see sort of a breakdown again. Um, where they occurred, and you can see this year uh, of the levels at, at the high schools where we had most of our complaints for various things. And the types of complaints, you know, we're, we're in a people business, and uh, you know, when, when we're dealing with people, we're going to have some people that get upset with staff and, and vice versa. Uh, a lot of times it's a misunderstanding or a miscommunication. Um, but that is, you know, that's sort of my role, and I feel like I try to intervene and uh, try to support both sides, try to try to listen to the parents and support the parents, and also try to, um, you know, fix any misunderstandings or try to address any misunderstanding or some kind of lack of communication. So you can see sort of the breakdown with the with the types of complaints. And so, and and just in conclusion, this isn't a very long report, but. Um, the, you know, I have a good team, Gene Cardwell, Leslie Fulham, and Matt Evans all work in my office, and they all work very hard, and we all work very hard, um, you know, to try to address these concerns and complaints and grievances that come our way. So we're very happy to do that. So, that is it. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Sure. Thank you. At this time, we're going to um, do the individual um, or the signing of the negotiated uh -oh, agreements. Uh -oh. Technology update by John's card. Yeah, they want to do this. Oh. Um, may I have a motion to approve the negotiated agreements as discussed in closed session? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Dr. King, will you please join Ms. Karen Fields, Association President, Mr. Arthur Pippa, Uniserve Representative, and Ms. Vera Walski um, for the support group, and myself to sign the agreements, please. So, on the left-hand side, we have the Board of Education, the Queen Anne's Education yeah. Association. <laughs> okay, so we would ask, you know, we would ask for Karen to sign as the president, uh, and then uh, whoever would be a co-chair, and then the other negotiating team members. So do you want me to sign as the co-chair? <coughs> I'll, I'll leave that to So, Karen, we'll use this as a signature sheet on all three agreements, okay? Mm -hmm. 
could sign in, you know, change it to vice. Yes. Yeah, and Here. you want two originals art or you're good getting a, a scanned copy of the one? No, we, I think we would like to take a, have an original copy. All right, then we'll have to, we'll have to do it again on the left hand side. <laughs> just no, this just one? Or do I do this one too? This one too, please. Yeah, that's great. It is done. Okay. I'll give this to you. Yep. Please. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good Thank you. and reasonable Thank outcome. You. Mm -hmm. is here representing the administrator advisors. <laughs> Have you met? So I would ask you to please, John, your signature will be at the top on the right. So if I may, okay. Dr. Kane, Mr. Maggio, members of the board, on behalf of ANS, hello Grace. On behalf of ANS, I would like to say thank you. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, a lot of energy went into the revisions of our contract for this year and the results are contracts uh, for which we are very proud. So on behalf of ANS, I thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought it would be a fancy pen up here. <laughs> thank you. Not fancy, but it'll <laughs> Or are you um, for Yes. So I saw the wrong spot. Oh, yeah. Sometimes there is, not always. Oh okay. So, are you the president or is Kevin? Kevin's the president, so okay. I'm the chair. Okay, sign the chair. But am I here or there? Just ignore <laughs> this one and do it right here, please. Right there. She got to be vice president. <laughs> Surprise. I signed it in. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fine. And now we will move on to the technology update with Mr. Josh Combs. Yeah, she said to be sure to follow that. Do you not have that? You were following me. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I'm Josh Combs. I'm the technology supervisor for 
Queen Anne's County Board of Education. I'm going to do a presentation on kind of our department breakdown, our staff, what we do, some of our repair tickets we have done, both for the one-to-one -one and um, lab computers and everything that we do. <coughs> There's some changes in the personal insurance this year, so I want to go over that. Uh, the summary of the end-year procedure is basically what, how we how computers get turned in at the end of the year, the one of ones how we fix them in um, that process. And of course, to go over my budget and the computer capital budget that we use to fund a one-to-one -one and what our plans are for years four and five. These are all our locations. Um, the schools, as you're aware, anchor points. We also have the warehouse, the board office, ifs and toddlers, and two other infants even start family support centers. So all of those we support in some capacity. This is my team. Uh, we have two guys that do computer repairs full time. Um, my tier one guys, they generally take care of web desk tickets. And tier two also take care of web desk statistics and anything that gets escalated from tier one or if we run into issues where we need more guys to do compact repairs. We will move guys to, and add more to the Chromebook repair field. So they're all trained to do uh, mobile repairs. This is a breakdown of all the devices. Um, the main thing to take out of this is we have roughly, we have over 11,000 pieces of equipment uh, between the eight of us that we manage and have to uh, keep up and running and fix. So. Uh, it's a lot per person, but easy. <laughs> um, I think we're doing a real good job with that. So that's just a breakdown of all of our equipment. It's mainly the laptops and the desktop computers in the rooms. When I say web desk tickets, this is where uh, a teacher will report a problem. It goes into an online ticketing system. So that way all my technicians can see it. They write notes and close out. And the kind of stuff that we do are student desktop repairs. Um, it could be hardware, it could be software like viruses, things like installing bulbs and AV splitters for the interactive boards, um, network connections, you know, and printer issues. So all of that kind of repairs go into web desk. And we do about 2,000 tickets a year. Now, this is a breakdown of all of our tickets for the past five years, broken down by elementary, middle, and high. Other would be things like the board office, APA, the smaller organizations total. And it roughly is about the same um, for the past four years. Uh, 67 is only in the first semester because uh, at the time, I wrote this, I didn't have it finished out. Uh, this is another breakdown uh, by each level if you just want to see how elementary's tickets have gone in middle school. <laughs> Again, like I said, they're roughly about the same, so we've been pretty consistent. Now, one-to-one, -one, we do everything for the students' one-to-one -one repair. Hard drives, LCDs, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, Re-imaging network, so. This is our breakdown of all the Chromebooks repair since we started this process. Um, the first year, as you can see, we had about, on the average, 55% damage, and it's going up uh, over the years um, from wear and tear and going back and forth from home. It, it, all the different things, and things get older, it takes harder repair, but we do all the repairs our stuff in-house. Um, Order the parts. So we have warranties on all of these to go ahead and fix everything. All right, personal device insurance. This year, they actually made it much easier for Queen Anne's County with the personal insurance if parents elect to have that on their devices. It's now cheaper. It's only thirty dollars a year. We can now see who has insurance before. If you bought it, I wouldn't know because it's kind of a personal thing. But now they give us a list of showing it who owns what. We can make claims for the parents before everything had to be done by the parent. Now 
they don't have to do anything. We can take care of everything. We can send the box out. We can get it fixed, and they're kind of hands off. We'll take care of everything. Um, very similar to like insurance, it's, there's an open enrollment. Starts on the first day of school, ends on the last day, and that's for $30. Anybody that signs up after that, it's going to be a prorated rate. So they'll just make it, it's going to be cheaper based on you only have eight months left of the school year. So you just call and they'll add you through the system. Oh, and the uh, other option is to make claims online. Before it was all phone calls and emails, so now we can just go on like we do warranty, just put it in, and it's going to be a lot faster that way. The difference, the top one, is basically the personal insurance. The main things that they cover over a standard warranty is human and natural disasters, lightning, flood, things like that. They cover that. Another thing they cover that most standard warranties don't cover is theft and vandalism. You're 100% assured if your device gets stolen, they will cut you a check. And another, and of course, if you decide to, for some reason, throw it in a river, <laughs> they will also <laughs> cover that. Um, so there's not, the insurance is pretty great. I mean, it seems to cover every single thing that could happen to that device. Um, for the end of the year, we did a website for the teachers and support staff. That way everybody knew what the procedures were, how it was done. Uh, so the teachers could click here. So I have teachers on the corner. And we have it by written. We have, they can print it out if they want to have, save it. And we even did videos that showed how to use. Because what we did was we made a piece of software that teaches one little screen, takes a few seconds to load, and then they would just put in the student's ID, check off what, if they see there's any kind of damage. And then that's what we use to collect all the data for the end of the year. Do you have something at the beginning of the year when you're handed it to a student and yes. keys are missing? And yes, the beginning correct? of the year. Everything goes into Alexandria. That's the card catalog system at the schools where we use to track books. So everything goes into Alexandria when it hands out to the student, it signs to their student ID. So we know who has what. Um, and it's kind of like it's kind of like the reverse. So like here's like a quick end of year summary. The kid students will bring in the devices, staff will evaluate them and enter the findings into that little program I showed you. They put a little paper band on it kind of marks down what's wrong with it. It'll be like LCD or something. That's used so when it goes down to the media center, they know what kind of, they put them in piles. It's easier for us to know these are all LCDs, these are all keyboards. We go to the school, we, we re-examine everything that's been reported, make sure it's accurate. If not, we update it and make sure the proper changes are there. We will go ahead and order the parts. And the other thing we change this year is we're doing all the repairs at each school. That way things aren't going back and forth. Nothing's getting lost. Everything is happening at the school. And then what they'll do is at the beginning of the year, they will hand them out using Alex Jr. to track them. So and at the beginning, the end of the year, we check them out of Alex, or check them back into Alex Jr. And then we know it's been reported. So we know if, there's nothing's been, if something's been missing. Is it a good practice for the parents when they get the computers at the beginning of the year to also reevaluate them? Yes. Okay. yes. And what if, what if you give, and I'll use myself as an example. My son got his same Chromebook back, turned it in with all the keys, got it back the beginning of the next year. Keys were missing. Um, that definitely we should know about because for me that we should fix it. You know, okay. it's not the parent's fault or the student's fault. I mean, it was checked in perfectly at the end of the year, which is why we did the database. Now we know what, who checked it in, what teacher checked it in at the end of the year. That way we know how that device was turned in. Um, but it's always good to check it out, the parents to check it out so they know themselves. So in case there's any discrepancy, let me know and we'll get it fixed. Okay. Do they have access to how the teacher has recorded it in the system when they did receive it back? No, or give it out? no, I don't. We could probably, mm, I have to figure out a way. I could maybe do a email next year with that. You know, maybe send an email what was reported. We could do something like yeah, that. Yeah, because like Jen said, she knew she that way you would know how it was keys, turned in. 
but she doesn't know if the teacher got it with the keys. Mm -hmm. Don't know what right. happened to the keys, but they're wrong when they came back. We can, make, we back can add that. Right. Yeah. 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 That seems easy. That's easy enough to do. This is my operating budget. Most of it goes to licensing and maintenance contracts and warranties. That's the the big part of it. I mean, it's PowerSchool and Microsoft and um, virtual software and backup software. That's the big chunk of it. Um, the smaller parts kind of what we use for the rest of the year, which is the supplies account. And we use that to replace LCD screens, AC adapters, um, basically just parts and any kind of like office supplies. We also have to pay to ship the bags. The bags are where we have to pay to ship them back so that car comes out of the same account. So that's my kind of my main, main account. This is year one through year five computer capital. This is what we had that plan we came up with and what we have done, the major top key things we have done since year one through year three. We're on year four now. Uh, the first year we did Chromebooks for the middle schools, laptops for teachers, and wireless units because we have put wireless in all the classrooms. The next year was the high school laptops, um, upgrade the power school. We put a new firewall in for better speed security for all these devices. Um, bought additional loaner Chromebooks because we had more online testing. Year three, we did uh, third and fourth Chromebooks and replaced some labs and replaced our, our SAM, which is like a big hard drive where all of our servers live here at the board. So it's our big, big server here. This year, what I would like to do is replace all the school servers and the special ed staff laptops. Um, year five is, the money's the same as the year one. So that's why the numbers are the same, but we haven't, uh, we still want to work on that plan. Uh, there's servers that we have now. The schools are over nine years. There's, I can't extend the warranty anymore. There's some point they won't do it. So the new plan is to have two servers at each school, you know, to be more processors, faster memory. The big thing about it is it's going to be redundant. We could physically lose a server and everything will still be up and running at the schools. So during doesn't time, if something happens to one or we got to update one, we still got another one running. So they are going to load balance each other. And plus, it's easier to work on software, or update a software when you can move everything to another one when you have redundancy. Year five, they have reached over their four years. They're on a different replacement cycle than the teacher's laptops. They were started the year before we did one-to-one. -one. Um, it's about 100 to 120 staff members. Uh, so obviously, I, we don't have what the warranties ran up at the end of May. And one of the biggest things we're looking at is getting laptops that are much lighter and easier to carry. Um, obviously, if you want to be faster and, and have more memory, and it's just they have to carry back and forth a lot. So we want to make sure that they're nice and uh, not as bulky as they were. And we're also going to operate to the latest operating system and software so they're up to date on everything. Year five, my department's going to be working with uh, Innovation Center Team 3, so I can get feedback from the CNI group to determine which technology best fits those requirements. So we have, they have a lot of changes, and we'll make sure that we meet their needs and work with them to develop a new long-term one-to-one plan as we're ending on year five, uh, and obviously keep it aligned with Queen Anne's County strategic plan. And that's hopefully something we will finish up soon. But it's going to be a lot of conversations to make sure we get the right thing for the students. That's it. Any questions? I, I do. Sure. Yeah. Um, on the personal device insurance, mm -hmm. we as Queen Anne's County Public Schools own these computers, correct? The, this Yes, yes. You're talking about the devices I handed. Yes, yes, we own yeah, them. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. And so I'm wondering why we're charging parents um, insurance if we own them. I am not covered for theft, vandalism, or human and natural disasters. And why is that? 
it's not covered under standard warranty. It's not covered under standard warranty. You have to buy supplemental insurance to get those kind of add-ons. You buy a Dell from Best Buy, it's not going to come with that. It's just not standard practice. So how do we know who, is this mandatory? No. Okay. No, it's, not it's optional. No, no, this is all optional. This is optional. No, no, no. We don't force anybody to buy this. Do it's farm children get um, their insurance for free? We did that once. We had a grant, but we haven't done that since. Is I, anybody I, I don't, to do a grant? Another I think grant? we need to because, I mean, uh, the same way we offer school lunches, it's, right. it's optional. You don't have to buy it. But right. farm students still need it. And um, it's definitely something we need to look into. Agree. And perhaps anyone at a certain threshold or below. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have. Well, I think that we should be looking at anybody that sends in a free lunch. That's a good plan. That's a good place to start. Should be looking at free lunches. Mm -hmm. Who qualifies for that? Right. And How not are we necessarily assist them not with the reduced, this? not necessarily right. the reduced right. lunches, the but the free lunches. Mm -hmm. And how can we perhaps do something intervene like with yes. some assistance I think for we need this? To check into that. Otherwise, the parents going to be held responsible for those things if they're broken, stolen, or lost. Yes. And they already couldn't afford the insurance, probably. So then right. we were really we burdening them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we need to look into. Have that. you had much of that? I I don't remember your statistic. Of loss. Yes. Yes. I, I've had a lot of vandalism. I have a uh, don't have much as lost. Um, you know, I've had, I've had thefts of people broken in people's cars. Um, there's not a lot. Um, maybe, you know, maybe five this year so far. Um, the van is probably the biggest one where kids will purposely break it. Try to, the, I, I don't know if they're trying to get out. I'm not sure what, the, what it is, but yeah, we get a lot of that. But the only thing not covered by insurance, you've only had five of them that haven't been covered by school's insurance? For theft. I, I try to work with the vandalism as much as I can and, and not charge, but five this year so far. We've had kids also not turn them in. I've had kids lost them. Um, we, so, but you normally, yeah, we've got five, but you look at a high school laptop, you lose that, it's $800. And parents have been receiving a, a bill for I, that? The one did. The one paid for it. What about the other ones? Uh, not always. Because they, they leave the system and they're gone. Oh, so they leave with that bill, and we don't do anything about it. <laughs> We've had a, uh, the other two or three. It's because they they left, checked out, transferred, and they took the device with them, and that's that. We looked into um, leasing the computers. Uh, this has been my question since we we bought the computers at the very beginning. Is is like companies that would lease us the computers. End of the year, we send them back. That company upgrades them, repairs them, does everything. It's new school year comes, we get those devices back. I mean, have we looked into doing that versus buying the actual equipment? That's what we would do for, look for, for the new plan. Yes, that's, that's okay. what the and options I'm definitely going to look at for the new. Year five, as in it, what the year? year one, the new one to one. We, we end the year five. I'm limited on year. What year are we in now? Four. 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 Okay. All right. I, I think that's a but, uh, yeah, something very definitely. important to look into. Mm-hmm. Way we don't have to worry about kids doing insurance and all that because somebody yep. else is responsible for them. And it gives a better price for right for a new exactly. plan and we have a better idea of what. I mean, I think we got we learned a lot from your this this plan and right. learned a lot what, what we actually do. Sure. And now we can really right. get an even better plan for year the next six through eleven or whatever you want to call it. I, I'm still wondering about the ones that disappeared and then the people left. So we have no arm. We can't go to law enforcement and try to get payment of a bill. I don't know how that works, but... I mean, I guess we can always try to put it in collections. I mean, this part of the contract, we are allowed to put it in collections, but it just depends on how far... So everybody system. else oh. has paid their bill, except for people that departed the county? For the most part, yes. Yes, uh, we've had... Most people that have lost it know they've lost it, looked for it. They have given us replacement. Or they had insurance, or which had covered insurance. it. The insurance say. sent us a check. So they lost it and they had WAG insurance, they would just send us a check then the issue's done. Um, luckily, like I said, that we haven't had too many of those, but the other ones I have eaten the cost of it so far. So. so overall, how is our participation in the insurance plan 
per student. See, that one I didn't know because until this year, I had no idea who right. had you what. you didn't have that privy. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know who I was. Now I get a better idea this year okay. of, of what's what's going on on the, right. on that's on the optional right. side. Because if we're offering it and they're not taking it, then there's something wrong. We need to find out what it isn't. Um, I do know a lot of children do not do a lot of transporting theirs back and forth because their parents are afraid they're going to get damaged on the bus loss. Usually the younger children. Mm -hmm. I don't think we see that as much with the Some of you mother school with the, yeah. the principals. Yeah. But we don't allow thir third what, third grade to take third them fourth. home at all, right? Just third, third and fourth are in cars. Right. Third and fourth stay there. Fifth mm -hmm. through twelfth. still does. Mm -hmm. I have a, a recommendation, though. Maybe we can pass to the principals. Um, I don't think it's well advertised the um, insurance program because I for one follow everything dealt with my child last year and I was told that you don't have to buy insurance anymore it's covered by the school and the year before I bought insurance and a lot of my friends bought insurance and was real unclear the whole insurance program so we do need to make sure there's you can go home in Thursday folders parents sign that they understand that they're not buying insurance or because that was a c complete, I'm really happy my son didn't lose his because <laughs> I, w I thought the school was covering it or I, no, I would have bought the unfortunately insurance. Unfortunately, that's, I wish they it was. They require a waiver not to. One year the school did cover insurance for everyone. Yeah, we had One enough money year. to do that. Yeah. I think that's part of, we could do that if, that's again, for the, the next set been. of yeah, one to one. I think we need to stop changing policy as yeah. how they're doing it. We need to do one mm -hmm. policy and stick to it and be done with it. I agree. And then if, if we go into leasing them, as Jen has suggested, mm -hmm. that's the, that is the policy. That we lease them for, that's from or right. they're responsible for them anyhow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was my question. Good so. Josh. I think it was just a mistake, but what year was fifth grade added? Because I did not see fifth grade. Fifth grade was done by grant. Okay. Uh, race so grant. It was not done by capital. Uh, right. oh. It would have been bought during the same year as third and fourth, but it was bought by grants. Because they wanted fifth grade, they kind of got fifth grade the very first year when we did sixth or eighth. That was all done by grant money. It was supposed to be bought in year three, but we got it in year one. Thanks. Any more questions? Dr. Kane, do you have no. anything that you would like to? Thank you, Josh. You want to turn this off? Yeah. We're now going to move on to the Graysonville Elementary Edition. Ms. Carla Pullen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you. So I am here this evening at long last to ask for your review and your approval for the construction contract to the addition at Graysonville Elementary School. We've been talking about this project for quite a while now and for the last year we've been in the design phase. This project consists of a six classroom addition and we have a very small addition to the kitchen that's going to give us the square footage necessary to add a walk-in cooler and freezer. It's currently our only school in the county that does not have that capacity at present time. The addition for this school is necessary because we've exceeded our state rated capacity. We are over capacity at this point and we expect that the Graysonville area is going to continue to grow through the next seven to ten years and probably beyond that. As I outlined to you during our last meeting, we put the construction contractor out or construction contract out to the bidders and we received the bids on May 16th of this year. Whiting Turner was the only contractor that responded and we do feel that they're a very reputable contractor in the state in the US and they have a lot of school experience in this region not necessarily in Queen Anne's County yet but in all of the other uh, counties on the Eastern Shore in Baltimore and Arundel County so we do feel that Whiting Turner is a good selection. Included in your binders this evening is a bid tabulation sheet if you would like to follow along. I just want to outline how we arrived at the final contract number to give you a little bit of a better understanding and I'm looking at the bid tabulation sheet with the blue bars at the top. 
So with a public school construction project, if the project amount is over $500,000 and we plan for the state to pay more than 25% of that, we are required to use prevailing wage rates. And prevailing wage rates simply are wage rates that are determined by the state and they hope to establish a balance among the trades of more equal pay rates uh, on an hourly basis. And so they dictate what these hourly rates are that the subcontractors much, must use. So a $500,000 project, 25% of that cost being paid by the state, they ask that we use prevailing wage rates. We ask to receive our construction bids in two ways, with prevailing wage rates and without prevailing wage rates, and that's for two reasons. One, we wanted to see what the cost difference in the savings would be in not using those wage rates. That's also been of interest to the commissioners in previous conversations that we've had with them in regard to our state-county funding split. The second reason that we wanted to do that was in the event that we needed some relief because we were over budget, we wanted to see what that number might be. If you look at the top left corner, you'll see Whiting Turner is outlined. And if you follow that column along, you'll see the pricing that we received for the overall contract with prevailing wage rates and without prevailing wage rates. We also show the pricing that we received for the alternates, and I'll come back to those in just a second. The second section down is where we are deducting the fire alarm replacement portion of this project out of this cost. If you remember during the last meeting, you approved a separate contract for the fire alarm replacement for the existing building. So we're taking that portion out of that to get to our final number for the addition contract. So if you look at the column uh, or the row that's indicated as total, with prevailing wages, the addition project comes in at 4.5 million, without prevailing wages, $4.18 million. We had anticipated, and in the cost comparisons that we did and the estimates that we did throughout the project, that the very highest that we would be for our construction costs would be at $4 million. So at that point, we are over budget. The next item that we opted to do then was some value engineering and we worked very closely with our contractor, with our architect, with our engineers to look at some of the ways that we could save money with this project without sacrificing any of the benefit and without sacrificing any of the quality. So the next number that you will see there is what the number that we arrived at after our value engineering exercise and we were able to save a total of $117,773 through the value engineering effort. If you take a look at the next page of your bid tabulation, this is the value engineering spreadsheet and this outlines all of the items that we looked at to see if it would be beneficial to this project to either accept a substitution or decline that substitution. Two of the main items that really stood out were, number one, starting the project as opposed to starting July 1st on the construction, which we've already passed that time frame. Whiting Turner asked to extend that to September, and that was a $60,000 cost savings up front. That's with no extension to how long the project will take. We still anticipate that the project will be completed by August of 2018. So we felt that that was very beneficial for a savings of $60,000. The second large ticket item there was the roofing manufacturer for the roofing section that will go on to the addition. There was a very large number that was thrown out for a roofing manufacturer that no one had a lot of experience with. Uh, we had not previously used the manufacturer. There was a change in warranty that would have lessened the warranty by uh, taking that deduction. Um, so what we opted to do, instead of the large savings, we opted to save $20,000 on the roofing manufacturer. And that is simply to match the roof that is currently there, the manufacturer that is currently on Graysonville Elementary matches the warranty. We know that we've had good success with it there. 
Uh, the other items are essentially smaller ticket items, but as you can see, they add up really quickly, and we feel confident that uh, we've been able to take almost $118,000 out of the project, and we will see um, <coughs> all of the same benefits that we would have had we not looked at this. So the final contract amount that we are looking at and we would request of you this evening then for the addition project is $4,062,227. With that, I just want to give you a little bit more of an update that because we are proposing to not use prevailing wages for this project, the state in turn will be taking back some of their contribution. So the next section, I've outlined exactly what that will entail. The current state contribution is 1,343,000. We have 3,142,000 from the county contribution. So in total, right now as it stands, we have $4,485,000 allotted for this project. Because we are requesting not to do prevailing wages, the state then is going to only give us 24.9% of the overall $4,062,227 of that final contract amount because if they jump it up to 25% that they're paying 25% of that, um, then they will require the prevailing wage <coughs> requirement. So with that, our new state contribution becomes $1,011,495. So essentially, that will be a loss of around $331,000 from their contribution. <coughs> Total available funds, once the state has taken back their portion of the contribution, will be $4,153,495. So we do come in under budget <coughs> with the overall contract amount that we're requesting. In the very bottom left, I just wanted to give you a couple figures. With the value engineering effort that we were able to do, we reduced the cost per square foot by $35 a square foot, which is pretty significant. And it's taken the project essentially from a $4.5 <coughs> million dollar, uh, overall total with prevailing wages down to $4 million. $62,227. How did you come to that, Carla? How did you reduce it that much? It's the reductions were done first without using prevailing wages and then secondly with the value engineering spreadsheet. Oh, the, the square footage was? Oh, well, we, we came to that just looking at how much the cost would have been with the $4.5 million down to the $4 million number that we're looking at and that's where the reduction comes in. If you look at the, the price per square foot, you get up to around 364, 365. That's a little bit high in the state range for the average. Um, looking at it now, when you get down to about 329 per square foot, you're starting to fall within the average of what the state has. Okay. And just to give you um, a little bit more perspective with that, the state gives us, at the beginning of the year, the state gave us $265 per square foot. Toward the end of our CIP process this year, um, they came back and said, "Yes, we think that's a little bit low," and raised it to 293 or 293 dollars a square foot. But we're still over that number, and that's what everyone is experiencing with construction projects right now. We don't anticipate that waiting on this project would see any type of cost savings, as construction costs are not anticipated to go down anytime soon. In terms of our alternates, you may remember that we had hoped to do a geothermal mechanical system for this project. Unfortunately, the addition of cost to do that would have been 471000 so we are not recommending that we proceed forward with that. Alternate number two was to do the project without prevailing wages. That's a deduction of 400000 so we would recommend that we put that through for approval. And alternate number three uh, was the manufacturer for our fire alarm system. There's no change in price to do the 
system uh, that would be consistent with many of the others that we have in the school system. So therefore, we would recommend that we move forward with that alternate since there is no cost increase for that. Uh, that I don't understand. Okay. Um, you deducted that fire alarm replacement. So there's the fire alarm that we're doing on the existing building, and that's what we deducted. The fire alarm system under alternate number three is the fire alarm system that will go in the new addition. Okay. So with the fire alarm replacement in the existing building, we did accept alternate number three to use the simplex system. So, and there was no change in price. So we're requesting alternate number three, the approval for that. So we would go with the same simplex system in the addition as well. And it would be consistent throughout the building. And how are we paying for that? The it's part of the project. The uh, CIP, capital improvement plan for the, uh, you're talking about the fire alarm? Yes, for the new, for the addition. I'm, I'm confused, I think you took it out to deduct it. it. There. There's two parts to this. One part is the um, we apply for CIP funding for um, <coughs> installing a new fire alarm system because the other one was older and we're buying parts on eBay to keep it running. Um, so that system... An existing building. An existing building, yes. And then you have the new section, which will also tie in with the Simplex Grinnell system. Oh, so okay. it's two projects looped into one. But the cost is the price that we have been... For just the existing building yes it's still there okay. we'll still there, be moving forward with that there was funding in fiscal year 2017 to replace the yes. fire alarm system as a separate budget item <clears throat> so that's why they're extracting it from this project because it's a separate line item in the in the capital budget okay All right. <clears throat> are there any other questions that I can answer for you. And what is our start date? Start date would be in September. Uh, we don't have an official date until we award the contract and then we will have a firm schedule from Waiting Turner. We had discussed the playground issues with <coughs> the existing school and that during the um, first part of the addition project, the existing playground will be relocated so it will not be available for use. We have partnered with Shore Up, which is in the building next door, and they're allowing us to utilize their playground throughout the, the time of the project that will be without the playground at Graysonville Elementary, so we have a good solution for daytime play um, while the existing playground is out of commission. I do have one question, just sure. your gut feeling here that this is a lot of deductions here. I don't know each of the issues you're comfortable with those um, it's not going to degrade no I'm very comfortable with it we've spent a lot of time going over it we've had maintenance involved and uh, Ms. Pullen's done an excellent job with that I'm I'm very confident in the numbers that we have there maintenance has taken a look we've had the engineers go through it very thoroughly we've had the architects <coughs> go through it very thoroughly um, and most of the items are things that would just typically be specified for a much larger project. And because we're on a smaller scale here, things like there were some significant savings for coordination drawings. And coordination drawings can be really tricky if you're dealing with a very large building or if you're dealing with a renovation where they're trying to do piping above ceiling and there's not much height there. Because we have a new addition, it's six classrooms, it's very straightforward. Everyone was very comfortable that the duplicate drawings were not going to be necessary, so there was a cost savings there. So all of the items were vetted really thoroughly before we made any decisions. Great job, man. great job on finding these. She did a nice job. Thank you. So we just needed an approval to <coughs> move forward with the uh, contract for Whiting and Turner. And we would also ask that with that we accept alternate number two and alternate number three. I move that we approve the contract for the um, addition at Graceville Elementary for Whiting Turner with uh, alternates number two and number three. Second it. 
All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you me. very much. We look forward to giving you updates soon. Thank you. Take a um, ten-minute break okay. at this point. Do you need more? Um, I think at least one of their um, high schools need to leave. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Grace, yeah. would you like to leave at this time too? It's up to it's you. It's up to you. It's right. up to you. Totally. Up Sarah to you. has somewhere she has to be, so that's why. Oh, I was work in the morning. <laughs> so. That's why. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see you next month. Yeah, let's take a break. We're going to take a 10 minute break. Um, before we do, apparently, we have a um, new principal to their school system here. And um, I don't know who she is, so I think she needs to stand up so that I can <laughs> see who she is. And um, Tara Downs. Mm -mm. And Tara, you will be at Stevensville Middle School, correct? Welcome, Tara. Welcome. And now we'll take our 10 minute break. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to reconvene the uh, meeting at this time. Yeah. Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, Dr. Gaines. I didn't know you were down there. Um, at this time, we're going to move over or um, move on to uh, 8.03 policies, third, final time before the board. That is the field trips, correct? Curriculum field trip and curriculum manage management policies. Correct. May I have a motion to approve the field trip and curriculum management policies? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. And then we move on to um, 8.04. Extended policy. Which is the, oh, okay. Uh, let's see. This is um, <coughs> it's a list of about 15 policies that. Uh, Need it to be rescinded. rescinded. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. That's not on this list. They were absorbed yeah. in other policies. We, that's right. <coughs> They've been absorbed in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So uh, it's final time before the board. So do we need to have a motion to rescind? We need a motion for this one. Yes, too? we do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. To so rescind. I make okay. a motion that we um, approve the policies to be rescinded. I second the motion. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. HR report. And we move on to the HR report. I move that we accept the HR report as as presented in closed session. I second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Transfer and we move to 8.06 uh, in category transfer letter. Um, can we combine both of 8.06 and 8.07 together? Well, usually she ex makes some explanation for the public. Right. Um, okay. Do we have to do them separate, or can we put I them don't together? Why. We, we, could, we can do them. I mean, when she yeah. explains them, why can't we put them together? Yeah, that's right. Okay. We can. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I don't think object. Okay. Um, we have two, you have two letters in front of you, um, both to the county, <coughs> excuse me, to the county commissioners. One is an in-category transfer. This is where we just need to inform the county commissioners that we're making a budget transfer within a category. There are four different categories there that we would like to make an in-category transfer, administration, instruction, special education, and operations. Um, if you would like me to go through more detail, I can. But I think we've been through those letters. The second letter is an out-of-category transfer. 
This one we are seeking the county commissioner's approval to move the money from one category to another. We're moving money from special education and fixed charges into instruction. Um, this is to cover cost of software licenses for the upcoming school year. We're moving money from operations to transportation and this is to cover the additional cost of transportation last year and then from operations to maintenance um, covering the additional costs in environmental testing and repairs to buildings. So we'd just like your approval to send those letters, for, forward those letters on to the county commissioners for approval. Okay, may I have a motion to, well I guess we can do two, both of them, or separately. May I have a motion to approve the in-category transfer of funds letter to be sent to the county commissioners? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. May I have a motion to approve the out of category transfer of funds letter to be sent to the county commissioners? So moved. May second. I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay. So now we're going to move to 9.01 uh, policies. So this is going out for a second read. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, did we have any comments on any of them? Only one of them, which was the bullying policy. A comment indicated a desire to include a similar policy for staff. I've spoken with Mr. Paluski, and we have a proposal we'll make at the next board meeting. So I make a motion that we put out the four following policies. Uh, student wellness, nutrition, bullying, harassment, bias behavior, student discipline, and drug and alcohol free policies out for the, um, that would be their third and final read? Yes. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. And we will move to uh, policies first time before the board, the school improvement. Mrs. Pauls, would you like to on this for for us he's new he'd be ever so ready that's right good evening vice president DiMaggio, Dr. Kane. Um, it is my pleasure to present the policy on school improvement. The purpose of the policy is to ensure that there is a consistent process in place at all schools to ensure that school improvement <coughs> um, is consistent and the same at all schools. So we ask that you um, take a look at that policy and we put it out for several reads. Thank you very much. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. So I need um, a motion to put the or the policy the first time before the board um, school improvement. So moved. I need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We will move to 9.03 textbook, medical assistant, assisting administrative and clinical procedures with technology. Those are the two texts that we're two talking about. Mm -hmm. The okay. titles of the texts. These are both for the uh, Academy of Health Professions. So this is an update to the textbook and workbook for the, uh, a course that's within the CT program. It would be the request is 30 days before for any kind of public comment. So I need a motion to put out um, the medical assisting administrative and clinical procedures with anatomy and psychology and workbook. Um, and more both medical, medical assisting administrative and clinical procedures with anatomy and physiology, <laughs> physiology student workbook. So moved. Need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. This time we'll move to 10.01, which is a superintendent's report. Dr. 
Andrea King. So thank you for the opportunity to, pre to offer a report. Since this report really has to do with the month of June, and I was not here during the month of June, I am going to defer to Mr. Paluski to offer that report. But I certainly do, once again, like I would like to reiterate uh, my gratefulness for the warm welcome from everyone today and, and the days preceding since I've been here. It has really been great. I'm looking forward to working with everyone. It's been a great start. So thank you. Thank you. We're glad to have you, Dr. King. Thank you, Dr. King. Uh, just three quick highlights, uh, and I think the first one is really at the essence of why we're all here. And in June uh, was our graduation, uh, both Kent Island High School and Queen Anne's, uh, which everyone attended. It speaks for itself, but it really gets to the core of why we're here and the work that we do uh, every single day at that culminating event to graduate. Uh, the second thing is I would like to uh, recognize Mr. Brad Engel, who I think is still here, uh, and Mr. Eric Daniels, who is here as well. Uh, they had put together, as well as a whole host of others, a celebrating of diversity and youth in Queen Anne's County event that was purely outstanding, uh, recognizing students from all over the county and celebrating the wonderful strength that we have in diversity. But I want to brag a step further because uh, it was really the duo of the two of them singing the song Stand By Me. Yeah. And Mr. Daniels uh, made it very clear in the audience to say, stand by me. No, literally, stand by me. <laughs> and the two of them, very amazing, within about 30 seconds, the entire place stood behind them and sang that song with them. So I commend them for their leadership, and it was great. It was just a great community feeling, and thank you for cultivating that. Thank you very much. Encore. <laughs> That's it. All right, so at this time, we'll move to 10.02, the curriculum and instruction report. Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Gregory Pouski. Well, you know, uh, doing this with my partner in crime, uh, Mrs. Janet Pauls, uh, and, and kudos to her. And, and I would really like, again, to thank her for her leadership over the course of this year. Uh, there's no way I could have done that job if I didn't have her uh, by my side, as well as the executive team. So I will uh, summarize some of the, the highlights that she's highlighted for me. Uh, her and the entire curriculum instruction team have been doing a lot of curriculum writing, as you can imagine. Uh, they're doing assessment writing and updating, uh, lining instructional materials, getting ready for the opening of school, which has been the bulk of their time uh, in the month of June. The second thing, uh, we had a great two-day leadership institute at the community college, uh, which we focused on school improvement, the same policy that uh, Ms. Paul spoke about, uh, doing the data dive, understanding where the student needs are, where the achievement gap is, how our school is going to plan uh, for the upcoming school year, uh, and some professional development that we're planning. Uh, it's been a great two days. Uh, and then we'll have August 15th, 16th, and 17th which is right around the corner, that will bring the leadership back uh, in order to prepare for the upcoming year. So it's been a busy summer. Summer's starting to slip away, and uh, it'll be here tomorrow before we open schools. So thank you. Thank you. And I would personally at this moment like to thank Ms. Janet Pauls for everything that she did this year for us. I think she did a wonderful job um, with Mr. Poluski, and um, personally would like to give them a round of applause. Thank you very much, both of you. Privilege to serve. Okay, so at this time, uh, we'll move to uh, public comment. Was there anyone here that would like to speak? Okay. And we will move to 12.01, upcoming meetings and events. I believe we decided to eliminate August 16th work session. Yes. And the, the meeting will still be, the uh, Wednesday meeting will still be on August 2nd. Yes. Where is the new teacher luncheon this year? That has not been determined uh, at, what is it, the location? The location, they are thinking, I just spoke with uh, Betsy Bear, she thinks it's going to be at the church. Uh, mm. the church and so. Oh, that's the a nice right. hall. Okay. Yes. yes. Where? It's it's hall. Saint yeah. Paul's on um, Liberty. Okay. I don't know where that. But, but we will confirm. Okay. 
Well, at this time, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? second. All in favor say aye. 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 All the pay opposed say no. See the ayes have it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending the Board of Education's meeting. Thank you. Thank you.